something or trying to do something, uh, but uh, please let me know uh, any that you know about. It's in uh, Tennessee, uh, mm-hmm. West Tennessee, close to Jackson, close to Jackson. Okay, well, I don't want to take too much time, but do you have any, any questions? And uh, applications for the different groups of the campers and the staff and the adults. And I'll put them on the table in the back uh, this afternoon. Uh, anything we need to do. Uh, people who are regulars at the camp every year, I'd like to meet with you together to talk about how we can improve and what we need to do and, and different things to get prepared for camp this next July 9th through the 14th. We're going to have a special event there. Why? Because it'll be our 60th anniversary that we've been continuing with that camp. 60th. Time is flying. 
Any more information you want to know, contact me anytime uh, during this week, okay? Can you give us more information? No. I want to be kind to another person and give equal time. So I'm going to give Dennis his time to give his lesson. Any other questions? You can mem memorize those questions and then you can... Uh, the camp began in Arkansas and then it moved to... I thought it started in Austin at that time, maybe the first year. Same time as the workshop and the camp. It was called Indoor Camp. And after that, it moved to Arkansas, to Searcy, Arkansas. And continued there for a few years, then it moved to Memphis, Tennessee. Then we moved to Alabama, and now we moved. So we know we're finding a better place, better times. As you know, always we have changes and move things around. Okay? So, I don't want him to kick me, so I'm going to leave now. Uh, add that it's to the family. Can the family go? Yeah, this is the last thing I'm going to say. Okay. Anyone who can go except babies and diapers? No, we don't want any of those. Sorry. Uh, if the family and mom and dad are there with the little kids, three, four, five years old, yes, that's fine. Uh, to be responsible for your own children, for your family. But those children are nine years and up, they'll be under staff there. Okay? Patient, write down your questions. Or if you've got a good memory, memorize it. All those questions, and then come up and talk to me, and we can talk with your list of questions. Okay? Thank you for your attention. Okay, I'm making sure I got everyone's beautiful eyes paying attention. Some are using hearing aids and listening. That's fine. No problem. I want to say, no. how many know my name? <laughs> Not all of you. Okay, I need to say it again. No problem. My name is Carl. C-A-R-L. Car with an L, Car L, Carl, my last name is Moore, you understand Moore, don't forget to add one more zero, one more O in that, A to spell my name, my name, that's my sign, C, -N. okay, I want to give you a little bit of information about our deaf camp, Christian camp, D, C, C. And get more information ready, the brochures. Uh, you want to see pictures, what it looks like. Right over there it is on the booth. That was developed and designed by Bob Goodson, the man who's our cameraman, takes all the pictures. It's right over there. There's Bob. And his wife, Linda, where is she? Oh, she's right there next to him. <laughs> Hello, Linda. They both set up that booth back there. And we're hoping that all of you will come and join us. You understand the brochures themselves are that thick back there. There's over 50 back there. There's enough for all of us. Uh, if you're married, just take one. There's, uh, there's an application involved in there. And uh, individuals need to fill that out of the application. Send that to me. Any questions? The cost... 175 in July 23rd through the 28th. Okay? Hope that more of you will come this year. <clears throat> then we'll have more fun. Okay? Questions? If you have any questions, just go back, get a brochure read all that information back there. <coughs> oh, 
Where is the camp? It's in quartz. Mountain. Way up. QMCC. It really is about 10 weeks worth of camps there. The hearing have all the lists and the deaf have that week in July. In Oklahoma. Quartz Mountain Camp. <laughs> Are Harlow Snernstein here? They're not here? Okay, well, good. Unless it's online. Um, Tonight, we're going to have a special uh, time with Hollis and Ernestine and the worship. So I'm going to tell you now before I start the lesson, uh, at 6.30, the president of the school is going to come here. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, Hollis and his work and different things. So I'm telling you early now because uh, I know when we go out to eat, the time we chat, chat, we're talking, 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 Oh, it's 6.30. I better hurry up and go back. Well, 6.30 we start. Okay? So at 6 o'clock, I say 6.15, but I know the deaf. So say at 6 o'clock, you say, oh, it's time. We better go back. Okay? And so, what? And so to get here before that time. Okay? To make sure you get here enough time. Everyone's here. You don't want to miss it tonight. That's part of the reason we went ahead and we talked about the camps and other things. We added that now because we don't want to take that time tonight. It's a special time tonight, okay? We understand? So everyone be here early tonight at 4, 6, 30, okay, and be ready to go. Because after that, well, Bob's speaking, 
And Bob likes to speak for a long time, so we want to give him enough time, right? That's what the students tell me. I don't know. I, I just enjoy listening all. So, okay. Uh huh. Okay. We're going to talk about. We've been talking about this week. Speak or speak life, and that's the concept we're going to look at. And really, the lesson we're going to have today is is short. It's not a long lesson, but I think there's a point to it. We're talking about speaking life to a sinner. You know the story. John chapter 8, verses 2 through 11. We know that story. I'm going to read it, what he says, and then we'll discuss that story and make a few points about that. Can you read that, small friend? <clears throat> he says this. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery and they said, they, they made her to stand before the group and they said to him, Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses command us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were hoping, using this question as a way to trap him in order to have a basis for accusing him, to, to accuse him. But Jesus, he bent down, he started to write on the ground, with his finger. When they kept on questioning, he straightened up and he said to them, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. Until it says the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman, still standing there. Jesus straightened up, and he said to her, ask her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Sorry, there's building something downstairs, and it's so. Okay, so that's the story there. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in a minute. But you, I want you to notice the story. We read it. I like to read it first because I want to let God talk to us first, and then I'll tell the story. But the story is Jesus. He's gone to the temple area, the the place. He's going there, what for? He's going to teach them. That's his custom. In the morning, he'd get up, he'd go in there, and he'd take some time, and he'd teach. So that morning, they had an opportunity. They wanted to try to catch Jesus in something, so what do they do? They bring in this woman. They bring her in, and they force her to stand in front. And what's wrong with the woman? She's, they caught her in adultery, right? So they caught her. You think they said... Excuse us, you're committing adultery, so you need to get dressed, and we're going to bring you over here and put you in front of Jesus, and, and then we're going to try to get ready to throw stones and kill you, right? You think they said that? You think? Yes or no? Which? No, they just grab the woman, they bring her over there. Maybe she's naked, maybe she doesn't have any clothes on, she's embarrassed, she's ashamed, and they bring her and they put her in front of the crowd. The people, and they're all looking at this woman, they caught her. Now, it's an interesting thing, because adultery requires what? Two people. But they brought one person. Where's the man? He's not there. They left him. So it's easy to catch their point. They just, they're trying to trap Jesus. They don't care about that woman. And so they go in there, and they say, 
Jesus, we caught this woman in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses, it says we need to stone that kind of women, right? Is that right? Yes, the law says that. That's the law. And Jesus lived under the law. He understood that. And so they'd be questioning him, and Jesus, what did he do? What did he do? He kneels down, begins riding in the dirt. Now what happened when Jesus kneeled down? They focused on him. First, what happened? The woman, they bring her in here, and all the people, ooh, that woman, she's awful. She's an adulterer. She's a sinner. She's an awful person. And Jesus bends down, and all the eyes focus on what Jesus is doing. Well, he's, he's removing the shame from her. He's putting the focus on himself. I love that about Jesus. He says, look at me. And he's riding in the dirt. Now, what's he riding in the dirt? What's he riding? Huh? Well, maybe Bob knows. So after the class, you can ask Bob. Maybe he knows. Yeah. I've heard many stories. Some people say, oh, he's riding their sins. Or he's riding something about the law. Or, Does it matter what Jesus is writing? Does it matter? No, it really doesn't matter. It's not the point. The point is, all the focus on the woman, now they're focused on Jesus. And they keep asking him. They keep, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Jesus? The law says this. What are you going to, now they're going to obey the law of Moses? And finally, he stands up and he says, Who's without sin? No one's sin. You throw a stone. I think they had had the rocks. They were ready before. You're without sin. Cast it. Now, from the oldest to the youngest, they begin walking away. You know, the oldest are more wise. They know better. <laughs> right? And so the young are still a little stubborn, looking what's going to happen. But the old, they hear, oh, that's me. They drop the stone. And they walk away until finally, who's left? Who's left? It's the woman and Jesus. He's riding on the dirt, stands up. There's no one. He's left the woman. He said, woman, where are they? There's no one, no one against you? And she said, there's no one. Oh, but you understand something. One person that's still there. Jesus. Does he have a right to throw the stone? Yeah, because he has no sin. But what's Jesus say? I'm not going to condemn you. Go and stop sinning. And that's a very important phrase. We look at that. Oh, well, yeah, he says, I'm not going to condemn you. What's it mean when he says, I will not condemn you? Forgiveness? What's it mean? Grace? Free gift? He's just following the law. But the law says, you sin, you die. Period. So what's it mean? When Jesus says, I don't condemn you, it means, I'll die for you. I will die for you. Because the law says someone needs to die because of sin. And we're going to look at that in a little bit. But that's what the law says. But Jesus says, I accept it for you, for the sinful woman. So I want to look at these points. The first point, we're talking about speaking life, right? That's the theme. 
this week. And John, he talks a lot about life. Jesus says, I came to give them life and life to the full, right? He's talking about that. So we're talking about speaking life. But what did sin say to the woman? What do you think? Sin said you're going to die? Sin said that? Really? Is that what your sin says to you? Your temptation. If I'm tempted to do something and it showed me the true picture, you think I will go ahead and do it? If I understand really what's going to happen there, I'm ready to jump into that? No. Temptation looks pretty. It looks nice. It looks, oh, I like that. It's a lie. It's not the truth. It's a lie. But that's what sin told her. You can imagine. The woman's caught in adultery. What was told to her? Maybe the man told her, you know I love you. I love you. And I'm going to continue with you. Oh, my wife there, yeah, your husband maybe. Uh, but I love you. Oh, I cherish you. Oh, the two of us, we're going to continue. That's sin talking. It's talking a lie. It's a lion, but she's, oh, I just want someone to love me. I just want to feel needed. I just want, and she followed the lie. Because what did sin really say to her? Death. Because sin's always a lie. It looks pretty. Oh, like Adam and Eve looking at the fruit. Oh, wow. It looks delicious. Oh, and it become like God. Oh, I want that. And they eat it. And what happened? Death. So it says one thing, it gives another thing. What the law say? We've already talked about that a little bit. What the law say to the woman? You sin, you die, period. That's the law. You break one law, you're guilty of it all, you have to die. That's the reason we have the sacrifices. It's the reason Jesus came and died for us, because the law requires a death. So what's the law speak? Life? Death. What the people say? Oh, we feel so bad for you, woman. Oh, you know, that man, he's using you. We're going to protect you. We're going to help you. We're going to, we care for you, right? The people, what'd they say? The people are the one, they took her and pulled her in and didn't care about her. They're using the woman for what? Well, the pleasure for them, but using to try to trap Jesus. The people, they just, they don't care about the woman. They don't care about the person there. They only care about trapping Jesus. That's their point. So what are the people speaking? Death. We need to stone the woman, and they're ready. They got the stones, they're ready. Let's do it. They're just waiting for the answer to go ahead. Death. What's Jesus say? Who has no sin, throw the first stone. He says to the woman, he speaks. What? No condemnation. He speaks to the woman, life. He speaks life. You are without sin. Cast the first stone. Because the truth is what? Who in here has no sin? <laughs> Who? I want to meet you. What? No one? Right? Who's without sin? No one. Because Jesus is the one. 
and I don't condemn you. He spoke to her life. Now, we need to understand something. When you go to the deaf clubs or the chats or other places and you meet the deaf, where do they live now? In the light or in darkness? Which They're living in darkness and they're in sin and they're doing things and it's terrible and they're being addicted and they're involved in sex and they're involved in many different things. And so we're going to go to them, oh, you need to stop. You can't do that. And we just, and we criticize them and we, oh, I don't want to associate with them. They're going to touch me and I'll become the sin. I don't want that. But the reality is many people in our world today are like the woman. Sinful. And so we need to be like Jesus. And we need to speak what? Speak life to those people. Is it going to change them fast? No. It takes time. And sometimes they change and they go back. And they change and they go back. They say, oh, I give up. You're no good. You're worthless. What if Jesus did that to us? Because, honest, sometimes I'm doing good and then I go back. And I'm doing good, I go back. Oh, and I feel like, oh, I'm crazy. I don't want that. I feel like, you know, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7. Oh, I don't want the sin, but I'm still doing it. I don't want to. And we need what? We need to hear the words of life, not death, not criticism, not negative, but life. We need to hear life. And that's the point of this lesson. Jesus gave the woman what she deserved. No, she deserved what? Death. The law said so. Jesus gave her what she needed instead of what she deserved or deserved. And we call that grace. Thank you for your grace through Jesus. And if we're going to be like Jesus, this is the point. We need to do what? Speak life. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this week. Thank you for the opportunity to watch Jesus and to learn from him. Thank you that he was willing to take our place. And he accepted death for us so that we could live through you. Help us when we teach others and work with others to speak words of life to them and not death. Forgive us when we make mistakes. Help us to improve. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. afternoon for the interpreting class we'll have one class by Chasa and then after that the second class will be taught by me Matt and then Morgan's class will be taught at 3:30 tomorrow So if you're curious, you want to take pictures and things, that's fine, go ahead. But when you put those pictures on Facebook, try to use the hashtag NDCW2017.
Why do we do that? Because we can get all the pictures to show up in one place and be able to